We're back with a fitting song for our next guest. Kara Swisher has had a front row seat to the rise of the tech industry, sitting down with the industry's biggest names, breaking major stories along the way, making some friends, making some enemies. Now she's out with a new memoir. It's called Burn Book, a tech love story. And she is not holding back. She never would. Kara, good morning. Oh, good to see you. Burn Book. You heard yeah. the Mean Girls song, right? Yes, the I Apex did. Apex Predator. Indeed, that's right. I'm, you, you had me at the Mean Girls reference. Oh, so did. are you like the Regina George of Silicon Valley just taking out the trash on, on the Silicon Valley I'll High take School? It. I'll take it. <laughs> if, especially if I look like Renee Rapp. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> the book has a memoir feeling. It is a memoir. But it has also your trademark bluntness mm -hmm. and fearlessness. Mm -hmm and cantankerousness, mm -hmm. and the thing that I find most marvel, mar like just I marvel at, which is your self-confidence. Thank you. Where does that come from? I don't know. I don't know why we ask that question, you know, Savannah. It's really weird. Everyone's like, how come you're so confident as if it's because a negative thing? Because most people thing? are. That's but why. But not that it's negative, just that yeah. it's, a re it's remarkable. One right. has to remark on. I don't know. Maybe my dad died when I was little. Maybe I had to be confident about myself. But I was born that way, I yeah. think, in that way. I, I mean, think many people are and get squashed out. I liked reading about your early career and mm -hmm. kind of, I mean, even as a young 20-year-old aspiring reporter, mm -hmm. you were like poking at people in power. Yes, yes. I have something. There's something about me that I, when, when people at, like people assume things, I'm always like, well, why? Why did you do that? What are you doing? And I'm not particularly scared of people yeah. unless they're actually scary. You did mention your, your father passed when you were just five years mm -hmm. old. And I was so touched by the way you put it because you, you, you said when you're five, your parents are basically the only people you know. That's correct. So you lost half your world. That's right. In just a moment. Exactly. Do you feel like that contributed to your drive or who you are? Yeah, I think it gives you, there's a thing called highly functional. People whose parents die at a young age, they get the worst thing that happened to them and they keep going. Um, and and then they're fine, but they're not fine, but they're fine. If that yeah. makes sense. You call this book a love story to tech. It is. So like most love stories I know, there's heartbreak, mm -hmm. falling out. Yep. What did you, what, what do you, what's your basic critique of this industry that promised so much, but that has in some ways been truly disappointing and, and some might argue you're probably damaging. among them very damaging. Yeah, I think, you know, every technology is a tool or a weapon, right? There's been too many weapon, weapons here, too much weaponization, too much negative, the negative parts of it. And I think the quote I have in the book that's most important is Paul Virilio, when you invent the ship, you invent the shipwreck. Mm. When you invent electricity, you invent electrocution. And I think everything's tended towards the negative parts and not the great things that could happen through tech and have happened through tech. And so that was disappointing that money, the first line of the book says, at all. So it was capitalism after all. Well, because these tech companies kind of came in with these yes. lofty promises of like, we, I do, yeah. we're going to bring the world together mm -hmm. and hold hands. Yeah. It's like a Coca-Cola commercial. Right. But that's not what they just wanted to make money. And you wouldn't have a banker come up to you and saying, I'm really interested in community, Kara. You know, they're interested in money. And I wish they had just done that. Just said so. Yes. Just been out and right. You've, you've interviewed every major player yes. in Silicon Valley of Mark Zuckerberg. You say, oh, see, I have to correct all your language on half these. <laughs> Zuckerberg wasn't in... What, how, what is it? A, you know, that word. He was yeah. worse. He yeah. was one of the most carelessly dangerous men in the history of technology yeah. who didn't even know it. What yeah. do you mean? Well, he's very earnest about things, but then be, gets to make decisions for the rest of us without a proper education. It's a very expensive education, but it's at our expense. His education. Yes. Yeah. For example, I had an interview with him about anti-Semitism, and he kept saying, people should be able to do this and everywhere they want. I'm not going to stop them. And I'm like, it's going to lead to things later. And two year, it took him two years to figure that out and then remove some of the stuff from the platform. But at the time, you knew it if you were even slightly educated about history. Elon Musk, you said if Zuckerberg was the most damaging man in tech, Musk was the most disappointing. You know, you once had a decent relationship with him. Yeah. It's deteriorated. Very Do you much. feel he changed? Yes. Did you change? No, I don't think so. I think he changed. He sort of got into the enablers, uh, incredible wealth, godlike tendencies, and then something off. I think COVID probably contributed to it. I mean, it's pretty incredible because he has an enormous amount of influence. He can, mm -hmm. with the flick of a switch, turn off the satellites in Ukraine, affect mm -hmm. a war. Mm -hmm. He has a, a huge amount to do with our transition to electric cars. That's correct. We take his ride on SpaceX to, to the, space, the space, the U.S. Station. government does. Yeah. Knowing what you know about him, do you, do you, how does well, that sit with you? It makes me nervous. It, it, you know, it makes me absolutely nervous that all of these people have unaccountable power and there's no laws governing them. That's what's astonishing, that there's if in the history of the planet, there's never been a more powerful group of people that have had very little, have very little laws against them. Not Wall Street, not planes. I mean, a, a door blew off a plane 
and like there were 90 investigations yeah. and 750 planes were grounded. Tech is doing all kinds of damage and nothing happened. Well, let's talk about it because, you know, what happens is congressional hearings. And we just saw yeah. it recently. Mark we Zuckerberg, did. it was a moment where mm -hmm. one of the senators asked him to stand up and apologize mm -hmm. to the families. But, you know, I think you and I talked about it at the time. I just kept thinking, well, wait a minute. That's all, you know, all these members of Congress are lining up to, you know, out berate the next one. That's correct. Why aren't they legislated? They don't have to ask for permission from these tech They're guys. also lining up to take their money. The lobbyist the lobbying is crazy and they can't pass any legislation. They've tried and tried it again, safety acts, algorithmic acts, privacy laws. They're just, they just don't do it. So at this point, this is what these companies do. They want to make money. The Congress has to act in this way, and they never have, never, ever have. Well, at the end of the book, I, I shouldn't give it away. You, you leave us to our own devices, <laughs> good line. But basically you're saying look up. Yeah, look up, look up. You know, the idea that we sit around, I, sometimes when I'm in New York or other cities and there's people staring at their phones as they're walking down the street, I walk up behind them, I probably shouldn't do this in New York, and I go, look up. <laughs> and nearly to a person, they're like, oh yeah, of course. And I want them to do that. And you know, I love my phone. It's my favorite relationship I've ever had. No, it's not. <laughs> I have a lot of It's up there. It's up there. But I mean, I was holding a, a Blackberry when I was, had a baby. So you, th that's where I am on this. But you have to start to realize they're, they're devices for you to help you, not to be your entire world. And that's what I, that's what I think about. All right. Well, it's a good conversation to have. Kara, thank, thank you, you so Steve. much. Burn Book is out tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.